Another lecture on cosmology and questions we'd be interested in for this video. You know, will the universe keep on expanding? We know that galaxies are receding from each other right now. Is that uh, going to be the case uh, a long time from now? Will the universe have an end? Some, uh, some event that we would call an end? So we'll talk about these uh, questions a little bit. There are three competing theories, ideas that astronomers have about our universe. Uh, first situation, we we have recession of the uh, galaxies from each other right now as space expands. That just keeps on going. Um, we have the the model of the big crunch. When you throw a uh, ball up into the air, it comes back down. Right now, we see the galaxies moving away from each other. You know, perhaps there's enough gravity that that motion will stop, and the galaxies will come back towards uh, the starting point. If you, if you can call it a starting point. And then the oscillating universe just uh, has this repeat over and over. Big, big Bang, the universe expands, gravity uh, wins and uh, stops the expansion and pulls the galaxies back together. Then we get another Big Bang, etc. The oscillating universe. And the sort of graphics uh, work with this and these models. Uh, with uh, the Big Bang being down here at the bottom on each of these diagrams. So if the universe decelerates and gravity is able to stop the expansion, then the universe will get smaller as time goes forward. So that's a big crunch. Or we might just coast to some uh, final size and uh, not, not have a crunch at the end. Or perhaps the expansion will pick up speed and the galaxies will be even farther from each other each year than they were in the past year. This last model requires another force that uh, is greater force than gravity. Well, gravity is trying to make the universe smaller, but there's uh, in this model a force that is uh, making the universe bigger at an ever-increasing rate. The recession velocity is increasing in this model. So to decide between the theories, we need to know how much gravity is in the universe. Um, and to do that, we need to know how much mass is in the universe. That's a very difficult calculation to sum things up. It turns out there's an equivalent uh, thing we can do, and that's to measure the density of the universe. Um, if the density is high, gravity is going to be high. If the density is low, the uh, gravity will be low. Density is mass divided by volume turns out there is a critical density number and we won't get into it real deeply but uh, a critical density number where there be enough gravity to slow down and stop the expansion of the universe it's not a big number six hydrogen atoms per cubic meter six atoms per cubic meter and uh, we're in a rough sense air at the uh, surface of the earth has a density of about 7 times 10 to the 26th power the number of atoms per cubic meter well that's uh, a lot bigger you can move your hands through the air and it's easy to do so but the air has a very high density compared to this critical density critical density is a small number so astronomers uh, attempted to measure that and what sorts of things have to be measured to come up with that density well the density is stars, gas, and dust, and the dark matter that we've talked about being in evidence in, uh, in galaxies, uh, single galaxies, making the outer stars move faster than expected, and in clusters of galaxies, keeping uh, fast-moving galaxies from escaping the cluster. And astronomynotes.com, uh, the lectures I'm using basically follow that outline, uh, would list seven categories of evidence for dark matter, you know, including what I've, I've said there, the rotation curves of galaxies, the, uh, the galaxy clusters, and, and there are others. If you have someone uh, taking this class with you, you probably should uh, pause a little bit and just discuss one of those pieces of evidence for dark matter. Make sure you're, you're confident of what astronomers are saying as to why the dark matter hypothesis is accepted. What's the observation that uh, says we do have dark matter in our universe that causes gravity but does not emit light or absorb light? Dark matter. 
Well, probably uh, your explanation to your neighbor involved uh, the high velocities that are seen and the uh, extra gravity uh, from dark matter creating those high velocities. It might in, uh, another good piece of evidence is the gravitational lensing that clusters of galaxies have where a more distant light source, the light is bent going past the cluster of galaxies and uh, forms images that, uh, that we can see. So here's uh, an inferred uh, uh, shading of dark matter. We cannot photograph dark matter, but by the uh, bending of light that's in evidence in this uh, photograph and the, the speeds of the galaxies in this cluster, uh, there is evidence that dark matter is in this kind of distribution where the uh, little thicker blue shading here and almost white uh, that's where there's more dark matter and then it gets less towards the outside of this cluster. A uh, situation here where two galaxy clusters are interacting and passing through each other and the pink is showing where the gas um, particles are colliding and uh, achieving a high temperature through that collision process and then the blue is the inferred dark matter and the dark matter does not interact and get stopped in the middle with the collision of these galaxies occurring but the dark matter has less interaction and uh, passes on through. The dark matter creates gravity uh, but uh, not light. So these measurements, uh, estimations of the density with uh, dark matter and stars, gas, and dust, the dark matter is able to provide about 23 percent of the critical density the critical density would be the situation where gravity would stop the expansion and uh, we would not have galaxies receding from each other forever. The uh, regular matter that we're made of and stars, gas, and dust, it's less. It's only about 5% of the critical density and there is you know, roughly five times more dark matter than there is regular matter in our universe. Well. 23%, 5%, that's 28%, it's not 100%. There's not enough density to give us enough gravity to stop the expansion of the universe. So our conclusion is we have an open universe, ever-expanding, not a closed universe where the galaxies would come back together. There's not enough density to create enough gravity to stop the expansion of the universe. And it's going to get worse. Just a few slides. So. Our conclusion for the fate of the universe, we're going to expand forever. We are not going to have a big crunch or some oscillating universe. Uh, universe expands forever. So you had to jot down a few questions on that and uh, pause if you need to. I'm going to continue here. The next subject is dark energy. The type 1a supernova, these standard candles that can be seen in the most distant galaxies, their uh, shift of their absorption lines allows a calculation of the distance and also the uh, being a standard candle we measure their apparent brightness we can measure their distance and it turns out that there is a mismatch um, and the supernova are fainter than what's expected from Hubble's law um, and the reason that they're fainter of course is because they're further away uh, astronomers have accounted for uh, gas and dust between us and the supernova and that does not seem to correct the situation. The supernova are dim because they're farther away than Hubble's law would predict. And the situation here is the interpretation is this velocity in represented in the absorption lines um, is not big enough. The uh, supernova you know, when they um, uh, when they explode the light starts moving towards us and this happened in the distant past in our, our universe history that light was not stretched out as much as uh, what the stretching of light is now the speed of the expansion of the universe is greater now than it was in the past the universe was not expanding as fast in the past as it is now in the past it appears that gravity was uh, more important than it is now. Now dark energy is more important than gravity 
And this dark energy is causing the expansion of space to grow at an increasing rate. The expansion is accelerating. The galaxies are not just coasting away from each other. The galaxies are moving faster and faster and faster and faster. And it's just the opposite of the big crunch. The galaxies are not slowing down and then coming back together. The galaxies are moving farther apart from each other at a faster and faster and faster rate. The space is accelerated in its expansion. And dark energy, I don't know what it is, but dark energy is the cause of the expansion. And it turns out this dark energy uh, can be called the cosmological constant that Einstein had taken out of his uh, general theory of relativity uh, equations after Hubble uh, showed that the uh, galaxies are receding from us. Um, Einstein had put this cosmological constant in his equations to balance out gravity to give a static universe before astronomers discovered that the universe was expanding. Now we can put it back in. Uh, there is this dark energy that is uh, counterbalancing gravity and even beyond counterbalancing gravity it has a greater effect than gravity and the galaxies are receding from each other at a greater and greater rate continuously the acceleration is increasing so the the uh, satellites that uh, measure the cosmic microwave background can provide an an estimation of these uh, categories dark energy dark matter and ordinary matter let's just focus on the one on the right the the uh, best uh, measurements come from the Planck uh, satellite dark energy makes up about 68 percent of our universe dark energy is about 68 percent of our universe and we don't really have a good idea of what it is dark matter makes up you know, 27 percent of our universe and we don't have a good idea of what it is it is not just uh, black dwarfs, uh, you know, cooled off white dwarfs. It's not just planets. Uh, we don't know what the dark matter is. What we do know, well, we've got 5% of the universe covered. Stars, gas, and dust, or protons, neutrons, electrons, or ordinary matter. So this is really kind of a dramatic conclusion. Uh, we have a good idea about 5% of the universe We've got very poor ideas about 95% of the universe. And there's still big questions to be answered in astronomy. And uh, stay tuned for, uh, for headlines. Keep watching the news. Again, our timeline of the universe, we had a, a big bang, a start. The universe had an inflation period when it expanded to a, uh, a bigger size very rapidly. We need inflation to give us a homogeneous universe. The universe is small and homogeneous sharing energy from neighbor to neighbor and now we're out here about 13.7 billion years and they're representing the expansion of the universe by the uh, volume here getting a little wider the space getting a little wider the dark energy causing this space expansion to increase and this increase if it continues and we have no reason to know why it would not continue it turns out as space expands dark energy gets more important gets bigger effect and this will uh, keep on uh, growing in such a way that not soon but a long time from now there'll be a big rip when uh, galaxies are torn apart when uh, solar systems are torn apart when stars are torn apart when even atoms are torn apart as space expands, the atoms separate into their pieces. Uh, that's called the big rip. The big rip. We have dark energy winning over gravity, over everything, over the electrical force uh, that would keep a proton next to an electron. But a big rip where this uh, unknown dark energy uh, causes everything to fly tremendously di great distances apart from each other as the universe continues to expand and accelerate. Now, a lot of this is conjecture. Um, this concept of the dark energy started in the 1990s and uh, research is continuing on it and uh, possibly will be refined in the future. 
maybe astronomers will discover that the uh, uh, the dark energy will not grow without bounds and uh, rip apart everything in the universe maybe it'll just uh, keep us with the recession velocity that uh, and keep us with uh, counterbalancing gravity so the universe doesn't come back together but pretty pretty much you can cross off big crunch the galaxies are not going to come back together to uh, sort of reverse the big bang process all the evidence now points towards an ever-increasing expansion and the universe occupying uh, more and more space there's more space being formed as space expands and some got to use your imagination and uh, kind of uh, try to get the overall big picture this is a descriptive astronomy course so we don't go into the math that's here and uh, a lot of the details we just give uh, a little view into what the thinking of astronomers is now are the fate of our universe is ever expanding and expanding at a greater and greater rate continuously so maybe that'll generate a few questions and uh, write those down and ask your instructor